hours. Like, well, sun doesn't shine 24 hours a day, right? And, you know, the obvious thing are batteries. But I don't think people realize how big some of these batteries and battery farms are getting. We have the U.S. grid. Um, it's It's been constructed. It's across the nation a trillion dollars maybe more than that of all the infrastructure that's out there um and like we're, we're stuck with it but if you went to a place like africa where they don't have an established grid, would you design it differently knowing that solar has gotten so much cheaper knowing that batteries have gotten so much cheaper why would i run a line from 200 miles away when i can just set batteries and solar panels right next to where it needs to go Hi, this is David with EV World News, and I'm here today with Mike Herzog, our resident engineer. How's it going, Mike? Glad to be here again, David. So first off, let's uh, talk about what's going on with solar storage. So you and I are aware of the fact that, you know, people are always like, well, the sun doesn't shine 24 hours a day, right? And, you know, the obvious thing are batteries. But I don't think people realize how big some of these batteries and battery farms are getting. You know, people think about like a car battery or a bigger one for you know an ev battery or something like that but these things are like shipping container size the rule of thumb we've always used is about a megawatt per shipping container okay if you could dent it anywhere i mean you you are putting in shipping containers that's a 40 foot container right yep yep and you know when you're talking that most of these ones i've seen are you know dozens if not more shipping containers all all in these yards storing all this well this first article is solar storage is the best option to meet power demand in africa and this is from the ceo of a company called release the combination of solar power and batteries to become the most cost effective and reliable energy solution to address the impacts of climate change, rising oil prices, and associated logistic issues in Africa. You know, one of the things, obviously, in Africa, you probably have lots of sunshine, I'm assuming. You know, so you've got opportunity there where it's probably very efficient to have solar there. And when you combine that with battery storage, it allows you to have it 24 hours a day. What, what's fun is like the tie in is. EVs are driving this. The battery storage spinoff from Tesla might end up being the company. I mean, they are they're being so effective right now in, in what they're doing and entering into that market space and and driving it in that. So it's it's interesting to pay attention to that from their perspective. And it's really when you talk about Africa, when you talk about um, it's it's kind of a thought thought exercise from from somebody like my perspective. Like, hey, we have the U.S. grid. We kind of have to play the hand we're dealt. Um, it's it's been constructed. It's across the nation a trillion dollars maybe more than that of all the infrastructure that's out there um and like we're, we're stuck with it but if you went to a place like africa where they don't have an established grid, would you design it differently knowing that we have this technology today knowing that solar has gotten so much cheaper knowing that batteries have gotten so much cheaper like would would you build it up from the ground differently and do it in that model of like why would i run a line from 200 miles away when i can just set batteries and solar panels right next to where it needs to go and it's it's those type of questions in these spaces and it's it's coming out to be like yeah it is more cost effective when you don't have to go cross country for hundreds of miles to connect connect your power sources to your end load use it's efficiency right it's a it's efficiency and you know cost savings and all of that um you know it's funny you mentioned that about tesla i don't think most people even realize they only think of tesla as a car company they never think about the fact of how big they are in energy storage. It very rarely even gets mentioned in news about the energy storage business because it's, it's not so big in the United States. It's big in Hawaii. We know it's big in Australia, but it's not really as big in the U.S. as you know as I guess you'd think with it being a U.S. company. But yeah, it's not quite there. Tesla battery market and just even outside the power wall, which, God, how long ago did they introduce that? You know, really one of the first people to say, Here's a modular system for your home where we have a couple solar, we want to do all of that. But it's more, yeah, they're industrial, commercial type operation spaces. And the battery market's big. The battery market's big. As we start to see more and more vehicles cycle through their battery life and, hey, it's time for replacement. Yeah, I know that that battery doesn't have the energy density anymore to put in a moving vehicle. But, God, if you want to go park it in your basement and charge it and discharge it a couple of times a year um, or once a week or once a month or anything like that. What a grand opportunity for it. Well, think about this. Let's say you're the president of some small African country. You know, what, what are some things you want for your population? You, you probably want food independence. 
from your neighbors. You want to be able to feed the people domestically, hopefully, so you don't have to depend on one of the surrounding countries or importing everything. You want to have energy independence, uh, battery storage, and solar solve at least one of those. And I've seen combinations of solar and ways to water crops. So there, there's ways to capture moisture through solar that I've seen where people have done gardens that have been mixed with the solar has been elevated and they're growing gardens underneath and they're able to um, pull moisture from the air with the solar and then drops the moisture onto the plants and allows them to grow. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but... It's it's uh, agrovoltaics. Is, it's it's a big thing. Right, we're in the Midwest and that's, that's starting to become a big one of... Restoring habitat, pollinator habitat, even to like grazing ground for livestock uh-huh. where it's hit. Yeah, if you space these out just a little bit further, it's, livestock's going to graze under that. They're going to sit under it because it's shaded underneath there on the hot days. Oh, yeah, I guess that's a, a pretty good point. Um, so that one was about Africa. We've got another one. An Australian developer reveals plans for a 3.4 gigawatt hour battery project, 850 megawatts. 3,400 megawatt hours. Battery energy storage in southeast Queensland helps soak up excess solar energy and stabilize the grid supply and demand during peak hours. I know Australia has actually had so much solar in some areas that they're trying to figure out how to give it away because they're they're actually getting too much energy from solar. Yep, they, they went that traction a while ago. And Australia is an interesting case because it's, it's obviously a developed nation. Uh, real rural uh, once you get beyond the coast, um, there's not not a lot connecting some of those those communities. So they've looked at renewables and battery storage. They've actually been looking at that for for quite a while. Because then some of those economics work out of like, well, if I don't have to build this giant line, I, I all of a sudden have a lot of money in my pocket to play with for for implementing some of these other solutions that might be effective. So yeah, they're just just the nature of their geography and how much wide open space there is in the middle of the country. Um, it's it's actually can play out there and be be effective more more so than it might be in in the u.s kind of wanted to show what this battery storage you know would look like this is a, a rendering and look at all of the containers well it's like eight, 850 megawatts i mean you need about 850 of them just just a quick rule of thumb <laughs> that's a lot of shipping containers to keep track of huh so it's the brimmer battery project it's four hour battery energy storage system I guess that makes sense. 850 megawatts, so hold that much for four hours. Uh, Queensland is home to a million rooftop solar installations. Wow. The government, state government is targeting 70% renewable by, by 2032 and 80% by 2035 as it transitions from reliance on coal-fired power. doesn't say where the batteries are actually coming from. I'm always curious where those are being manufactured. So you can certainly manufacture them down there in Australia. So um, Australia is one of the biggest sources of lithium mining. Yeah, it makes sense. You know what's funny is uh, I don't think lithium is really that. Um, it's certainly not a, a rare mineral. It's just that it's not really mined in a lot of places. No, it's it's not one of those real exotic, you know, that is found in bizarre locations across the planet. It's... It's fairly ubiquitous. It's just, yeah, they don't, they don't go after it as much. Yeah, cobalt is one of the ones that's not available in as many places. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.